Each year, about 90% of world trade is transported by ship. While commodities like oil and grain make up 40% of that cargo, large steel containers filled with appliances, smartphones, and couches make up the remainder. Maersk, the world's second largest container shipping company by capacity, behind MSC, transports about one in five of those containers. In addition to its fleet of 672 vessels, the Danish-based carrier runs one of the globe's largest port terminal businesses with 64 terminals. They are running a bus service. They are desperately trying to keep the buses running on time along fixed route. It's basically all that they do, except their buses are somewhat larger and they operate at sea. Maersk logged record profits of $29.3 billion in 2022, due in part to pandemic-induced buying and higher freight rates. Its stock price at the time soared. But the company is flagging high uncertainty for the year ahead, as a shift in consumer spending habits has brought revenue in line with pre-pandemic levels. Today, like its rivals, Maersk faces a range of challenges, including attacks on vessels in the Red Sea, a drought at the Panama Canal, as well as the threat of higher tariffs related to a potential Trump presidency. We knew that at some point the correction would come, and, and it did uh, indeed unfold here, in the, especially in the first part of the year. It feels like an incredible amount of uncertainty, an incredible amount of, of curveballs that the industry might be faced with over the next period. The reality is, if you look back just five years, throughout those five years, every single year would have had one, two, or in some cases, maybe four of those similar challenges that the industry was faced with. To offset some of its risks, the company is beefing up its end-to-end -end logistics business, investing in last-mile delivery and air freight. They're buying up airplanes, they're buying up warehouses, uh, they're building out terminals, and they're buying up trucking companies. That way their customer's box, aka the container, they have control over it from when it is put on the vessel all the way to either the distribution center of their client or their client's warehouse. About 11 billion tons of goods are transported by ship each year, or about 1.5 tons per person. CNBC examines the challenges facing Maersk and its rivals Hapag Lloyd and MSC, and looks at how the company is trying to transition for future growth. Ocean shipping is an unpredictable business. The global supply chain is one of incredible volatility. With the war in Gaza raging in 2023, members of Yemen's Houthi movement attacked commercial ships in the Red Sea, including vessels belonging to Maersk. Maersk suspended its Suez Canal operations and diverted its assets around the southern tip of Africa. Longer sailings require more ships, additional containers, and a lot more fuel. It has also meant higher freight rates for ocean carriers. Freight rates have gone up upwards of four times the amount of where they were just several months ago. About 12% of the world's global shipping traffic generally passes via the Suez Canal. Most of Maersk's competitors ordered vessels during the pandemic shipping crunch, which has helped all the ocean carriers alleviate pain around this new route. In more normal circumstances, this would have been disaster. We would not have had enough ships to do this. However, there are actually far too many container ships right now. This is what allows the industry to rapidly shift and now move the supply chains around Africa. Drought conditions at the Panama Canal impacted sailings too. In January 2024, Maersk informed clients that some canal traffic would need to shift to trains. 40% of all U.S. container traffic travels via the Panama Canal. They focused on the trade that is coming from Australia and New Zealand. They're dropping the containers off at the rail and then it goes across the country via rail and then is reloaded onto another vessel to go up through the East Coast ports. Ocean carriers are also contending with potentially higher tariffs on Chinese goods in the event of a second Trump administration, as well as a possible strike by the International Longshoremen's Association, the largest union for maritime workers in North America. At this stage, our prediction, our expectation as an industry is that we would hope 
that after that, everything just continues to be normal. Of course, the uncertainty is that we don't 100% know whether it would indeed be the case. But it could be the industry's fleet size that has the longest lasting impact. The number of container ships in the industry will grow by 18% over the next few years. We have too many ships. Right now, that problem is solved temporarily because we have to go around Africa. But the moment the Red Sea opens up again, we are straight back in to massive overcapacity and Musk will face the same headwind as everybody else in rapidly dropping freight rates. And it faces other challenges too. A container vessel chartered by Maersk carrying the company's cargo crashed into Baltimore's Francis Scott Key Bridge in March 2024. Maersk got its start in Denmark in 1904, when Arnold Peter Muller, along with his father, Peter Maersk Muller, purchased two ships. Lucrative World War I contracts helped propel the business. It built ships from 1918 until 2009, and it even ran a 25,000-acre sugar plantation in Tanzania for a time. Following the Second World War, Maersk was primarily transporting crude oil, but it was the revolution in containers that was a turning point for the company. The first container vessel left Newark Harbor in 1956. Maersk launched its first container route out of New Jersey in 1975. By the early 1990s, it was the largest container liner in the world, a title it held for more than two decades. The 20-foot container, which can hold the equivalent of 50 to 60 refrigerators, remains the backbone of the supply chain. From 1980 to 2017, container usage soared worldwide from 102 million metric tons to about 1.8 billion metric tons. In 2023, just the inbound containers into the U.S. Uh, were carrying goods worth a little bit more than a trillion dollars. And if you relate that to the population of the U.S., it comes out to the average of $3,000 per person. More containers mean bigger vessels. The average size of container ships has more than doubled since 2000, with the largest ships today carrying about 24,000 20-foot equivalent units, or TEUs, a unit of cargo capacity. Stacked vertically, the largest ships would be taller than the Empire State Building. There are roughly 5,500 container ships in the world today. But it was the spike in consumer spending, along with supply chain bottlenecks, that vaulted Maersk's bottom line. In 2021, container freight rates jumped to five times their pre-pandemic levels. Maersk saw its volume increase by just 3.6% in 2020 and 2021, and its revenue jumped 56% during that same period to $61 billion. Ocean carriers posted record profits in 2021 and 2022, totaling more than $400 billion. When it comes to the flow of trade, it is agnostic and it has to move. Mergers and acquisitions have also transformed the ocean carrier industry in recent years. Today, the top four carriers control about 60% of capacity. In 2024, Maersk announced plans to enter into an operational partnership with Hapag Lloyd. The new alliance, called Gemini, will comprise a fleet of 290 vessels with a capacity of 3.4 million TEUs. It's a very innovative concept that we're going to roll out between our two companies. Uh, in the end, that will bring much higher schedule reliability at similar cost and at lower emissions. Maersk had 2023 revenue of $51 billion. Its ocean business had revenue of $33.6 billion. And its land-based logistics and services business had revenue of $13.9 billion. To keep up with the steady increase in containers going into the U.S., Maersk is expanding its operation in Mexico. They are investing in the port. They are investing in the warehousing as well as their trucking. And so you are actually seeing more trade from China bound for the United States coming into the country of Mexico. By using the connection with Rills, by using our footprint of distribution centers, we're now able to also provide our customers an opportunity to serve their North American market through an entry that is no longer just the West Coast of the U.S. or the East Coast of the U.S., but could also be through Mexico. In 2023, Mexico became the U.S.'s largest trading partner, with 15% of Chinese goods traveling via Mexico. That same year, there were 31 million containers filled with cargo imported into North America, and 14 million containers filled with cargo exported from the region. In reality, you are exporting more empty air from North America than full containers. Maersk is also making other moves on land and in the air. 
It wants to be a key player handling goods from the factory floor to the end customer. With the pandemic dollars, Maersk went out on a buying spree, if you will, to expand their logistical footprint. So in 2022, they reportedly spent $5.9 billion on three significant acquisitions that expanded their footprint. In 2022, it bought U.S.-based last-mile delivery provider Pilot Freight Services in its 87 North American locations for about $1.8 billion. It purchased Hong Kong-based LF Logistics and its more than 220 warehouses for $3.6 billion, and German logistics firm Senator International for $644 million. Its largest business is Air Freight. The Red Sea now presents an increase in transit time of three weeks. What if we just take whatever is already on the water, redirect it to a Dubai and put it on the airplane? The e-commerce logistics market is expected to grow almost 19% annually to reach $819 billion by 2027. But expanding into ground-based logistics does create some headwinds for the company, including moving into direct competition with its own customers. The moment you go out as a carrier and say you do logistics end-to-end, it becomes more difficult to secure space on the other container lines. This is important because if you're a logistics provider, you are competing with, say, a Cunha Nagel or DSV or an Expeditors. They can put cargo on the ship of any carrier. Whereas in the case of Musk, they can sell a logistics product primarily centered around only their own service network. That is a more limited product. Maersk is also racing to have net zero greenhouse gas emissions across its supply chain by 2040. Unlike its competitors who are pivoting to liquefied natural gas vessels, Maersk is investing in methanol powered ships. It plans to receive its first vessel in 2024, which will emit 100 tons of carbon dioxide less per day than a traditional diesel ship. Maersk will rely on those ships and its overall ocean business, at least for now, as a barometer of not only the company's overall health, but an indicator of where the global economy is headed next. The global supply chain is one that is fraught with a perennial set of uncertainties that can present themselves at any given time. The ability to be agile in mitigating those uncertainties and the risks that come with it, you'll need someone who's able to help you navigate those ultimately treacherous waters of the global supply chain.